I'm sure quite a lot of you in the US and Canada are super excited about the upcoming 2024 solar eclipse. One of the most impressive totalities that's not going to happen in North America for at least 20 more years. And though it's only going to last like 4 minutes or so, it's probably going to create quite a lot of wonderful memories for those of you who do witness it. Now for me personally, I'm not going to be in North America to witness it, but I'm probably going to stream this and we'll probably talk more about this as it happens. Although in this video I wanted to ask a slightly different question, something that has been asked even a hundred years ago, but still does not have a very good scientific answer. Even though we humans, we kind of know what we're going to be doing during the solar eclipse, probably just taking a bunch of pictures and possibly staring at the moon while it's covering the sun, even though you probably shouldn't do that, even with protective glasses, it's still kind of dangerous. The question I wanted to try to tackle today is, what about other animals? What do other animals do during the solar eclipse and how do they usually react to these sudden extreme conditions? And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to focus on the science of solar eclipse in regards to other animal life. What happens to animals around the planet when they find themselves in these very strange conditions for those 3, 4, 5 minutes? And turns out the answer is a lot of really strange things. And there is no one answer either. But here let's actually start with just a bit of history and a bit of anecdotal evidence. Basically a bunch of different stories from around the planet, most of which you can actually find in a study from 1935. A lot of them have been summarized in there. As always you can find all of the studies in the description below, but this one is basically the first one. And this was technically the first ever scientific study conducted on this topic. Observations of behavior of animals during the total solar eclipse. This happened in 1932. For example, there are stories of different types of ants just kind of freezing while carrying different objects, including food, until the sun re-emerged a little bit later. This was observed in Sweden back in 1851. Meanwhile, in Massachusetts in 1932, there was a strange report of a very large infestation of cockroaches that suddenly occurred right after the solar eclipse. Basically, all the cockroaches suddenly came out to feast as if it was nighttime. Now, cockroaches generally do come out at night, so I guess maybe it kind of makes sense. And so the entomologist William Wheeler actually collected approximately 500 different observations from the public, which he then reported in his study. But the thing is, all of them were basically word of mouth, no actual evidence, and mostly anecdotal. So we don't really know if it really happened or if it was maybe a little bit exaggerated. Nevertheless, the study from 1935 was the first and probably the biggest attempt to try to answer this question. Animal behavior during total eclipse. Interestingly, some of the strangest behavior for some reason was reported in insects. For example, a swarm of bees was showing unusual behavior and appeared to be hesitant, uncertain what to do, even minutes before the total eclipse. But a lot more scientific evidence started to come out in just the last few decades. And these studies were actually based on very thorough observations and a lot more evidence. For example, the iconic Jane Goodall described several accounts of chimpanzees in 1986 who actually reacted in a very similar way to humans. They pointed at the solar eclipse, they started screaming and yelling, and it looked like they were basically saying, whoa, what is that? Look at that. So they were doing something strange, but not too strange. In contrast, baboons, for some reason, increased their grooming behavior, which they often do when they're kind of stressed or have a lot of anxiety. Then, this study from 1991 discovered that several lizards in North America, specifically in Mexico, for some reason, closed their eyes. I mean, maybe they thought it was nighttime and they tried to sleep, but they don't always close their eyes at night, so it did not make a lot of sense. Likewise, a study from 2009 from China discovered that a lot of birds suddenly changed their songs and also changed their behaviors. And they were not songs they usually sing at night either. It was some kind of a different song. And then there was this study from 1994. And here the scientists discovered that for some reason, certain orb-weaving spiders started to dramatically change their web and even tear it down, breaking it apart. Basically, they were destroying their web for some unknown reasons. They don't do this at night either, so it kind of made no sense. And since, on average, a typical place on Earth will only see total eclipse approximately once every 300 or 400 years, or like 375 to be exact, most of these animals very likely have never seen an eclipse. And so the fact that they have some kind of a behavioral response 
is already kind of unusual. But more recently, a study from 2020 conducted an extremely accurate observation of different species during the 2017 North American eclipse, once again discovering some really strange patterns, but this time making some connections. And this is actually the study that is still going on and that the scientists are trying to conduct again and are basically asking for everyone's help. More about this later. And here this was based on observations of 15 various species in the Riverbank Zoo in Columbia, South Carolina, with the overall conclusion being three separate responses depending on the species. Some animals displayed nighttime behavior. They basically switched into their nighttime mode and would even go through evening and nighttime rituals in basically minutes. This was especially true of various birds, especially more complex birds such as parrots and lorikeet. But interestingly, a lot of other animals such as giraffes actually displayed anxiety. They were suddenly really scared, galloping around, and basically trying to figure out what's going on, once again because they've never seen anything like it ever before. But this did not apply to all mammals. Some, like bears, really didn't care. For grizzly bears, the behavior did not change at all. And so that's essentially the three main responses. Anxiety, not caring, or nighttime rituals. Although there were some exceptions as well, and some were very strange. Probably the strangest one was from tortoises, especially Galapagos tortoises. For some unknown reason, the reason nobody understands, during the eclipse they all started breeding. And surprisingly, once the eclipse was finished, all of them looked up and kind of stopped and went on their merry way. By far, this was probably the strangest observation in 2017. And so despite trying to find trends or patterns or some kind of a common behavior, researchers didn't actually find any. Zoo animals and domesticated animals seem to all display different behaviors. But the majority of all species did display nighttime behavior. Basically, they assumed it was nighttime and started to get ready to sleep. This included 75% of all animals observed, with all of them going through evening, nighttime, morning routine in just 5 minutes. But the second most frequent response was anxiety, or I guess fear. So this was true for, for example, baboons, gorillas, giraffes, flamingos, and even certain birds like lorikeets. They all displayed behavior that showed fear. Which of course makes sense because, once again, they've never seen anything like this ever before. None of them were alive when the last one happened, resulting in this somewhat anomalous behavior. Another strange example was from Komodo dragons. Here, for some reason, during the eclipse, even though previously the reptile was basically inactive, during the eclipse it would suddenly start running around, once again as if it was completely shocked or confused, but returned back to being stationary and just doing nothing once the sun came out. And so I guess because of the range of responses in different animals, this kind of presents us with first of all a mystery, but second of all with maybe a bit of an explanation already. All of these animals seem to sense something different during the eclipse, and it's obviously these unusual sensations that make them react the way they react. For example, we know that during the eclipse, photosynthesis seems to completely plummet, and it actually takes hours to recover afterwards. And so animals that are able to sense the presence of oxygen or CO2 might react accordingly. Likewise, during the eclipse, some of the biggest effects are actually in the ionosphere above us. This is usually an altitude of 60 to 300 kilometers. And this area is known for containing a lot of charged particles, usually charged by the incoming radiation from the sun. But when the eclipse happens, the ionosphere falls and it actually ends up cooling the upper atmosphere, which then forms what's known as ionospheric holes. With temperatures dropping by 3 to possibly even 8 degrees Celsius, or 5 to 15 Fahrenheit, and even causing what's known as eclipse winds. And so these atmospheric changes may also affect a lot of animals, especially animals that are sensitive to heat and sensitive to wind, which is maybe why so many react so differently. But obviously, at least for now, these are just guesses. As I mentioned in the beginning, as of today, most of the studies were based on anecdotal evidence and not really scientific in general. But that's, I guess, until now. In 2024, there are three separate projects that are actually trying to change this. First, there is a project by the same team behind this paper. You can learn more about this in one of the links in the description, but in essence, they're asking for anyone from Mexico, Canada, or the US to help submitting visual evidence 
of animals acting strangely during the eclipse. Now in this case you do have to apply to be a member in this project, but they're definitely looking for more, so maybe consider joining in, especially if you know there are going to be animals around you when the eclipse does occur. Then there's also a project known as Solar Eclipse Safari. A very similar project focusing on somewhat similar ideas, but just a slightly different team. Their link is right there as well. And last but not least we have the project by NASA itself. It's called NASA's Eclipse Soundscapes. It's actually mostly focused on insect behavior, and basically here they're asking for sounds of different insects during the eclipse. But in essence, it's another project you can technically join in in order to become one of the participants and one of the data providers. And so now, in 2024, we have three separate teams with three separate studies trying to once and for all answer some of these questions. What do other animals do during the eclipse? And how exactly do those unusual five minutes influence life around us? And it's actually a really important study for birds especially. Since this is in spring of 2024, or basically during the migration and during the breeding period, ornithologists or a lot of other scientists studying birds are particularly interested in finding out how various bird species react to this unusual event. Once again, for some of them, this is going to be their first time ever seeing something so unusual. And because during this time a lot of different birds actually spend night times migrating to breeding grounds, it might physically affect their breeding behavior in some really unusual ways. But the thing is, we're probably not going to know about the exact effects for at least a few months. But we might know more if you join one of these projects and if you actually help them collecting some of the data, especially if you live on, for example, a farm or close to a location with a lot of birds and a lot of other animals. And so in the next few months, once the studies are released and once we have some explanations or maybe some additional data, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this because this is a super fascinating topic. And so until more discoveries, more connections and more patterns and more explanations, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out all the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the eclipse when it does happen. Subscribe. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye. Oh boy, I bet there are going to be a lot of jokes about those tortoises making love in the comments below. Yep, looking forward to that.